Hey guys, it's another day to delve into the matters of the heart and the mind. And as always, I am your coach, Tori. So what we're we going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about talking stages, okay? What is a talking stage? I know for some people, it's, it might seem like this is a relatively new concept and they're like, which one is talking stage again? I mean, we have dating, we have, you know, relationships, we have engagement period, we have marriage, which one is talking, t talking stage again? But the talking stage is the period where two people are getting to know each other romantically, but they haven't yet defined what that relationship is. They haven't yet defined their identity as a couple, but they know that they're getting to know each other with that intention of coupling, with that intention of committing to one another, with that intention of getting into something deeper. So basically, this is a stage where you're checking compatibility. You're checking, oh, is this person my kind of person? You know, do they reason how I want my person to reason? Do we have a chance at success if we should commit? That is what the talking stage is trying to figure out. The talking stage is not the period for you to be figuring out if, am I in love with this person? No. The talking stage is not the period for you to be figuring out, is this person end game? Is this the love of my life? Is this Prince Charming? Is this, you know, that is not the time for that. The talking stage is not the period where you're trying to figure out, will we spend the rest of our lives together? Are we going to get married? That is not the time for that. The talking stage is not that deep. It is just establishing, oh, there is a connection here. I like this person. I feel something romantic for this person. I like their personality. I think we're compatible. We communicate. I believe we might be able to have something strong, something potentially long-term. So let's try. And then you commit. And this brings me to my next point of how long should a talking stage typically last? Now, I don't like to put a tag on things because different human beings, different, different, different rules, basically how something works out for you is not necessarily how it will work out for somebody else. I know someone who met and married her husband within six months. So from talking stage to marriage, six months. And I know people that had years of that. So I would not recommend a fixed time frame where I say this must be it. But I would say that there is a time frame which I would advise in my opinion. And for me, a talking stage should not go beyond eight weeks because what are you talking about? Like I said, the talking stage is not the period where you're going to be figuring out all of the deep things like, is this love? Is this forever kind of love? Is this end game? Is this, that is not the period for that. You can be married for 35 years, going on 60 years and still not know everything about your partner. So a talking stage is not a time where you figure all of that. The talking stage is just, do we have a chance to succeed? So I would say eight weeks because really it doesn't take a person that long to know that I want to work with this person. I think we'll have a chance or, eh, nah, me and this person, we're not compatible ish. Let me just cut my losses. So I would say two months because sometimes it takes people a lot, a bit of flirting, a bit, a bit of, you know, you know how it goes for them to open up and then share because you need to open up, you need to communicate. That's why it's called a talking stage. It's going to be filled with a lot of talking. You need to open up and communicate and share a lot of things about your past, your present, you, your future aspirations for you to be able to establish connection or for you to be able to establish compatibility. So some people might take a little bit of a nudge to get to that comfort zone where they can share. And so that's why it's two months for me. After two months, if you as a girl have been waiting for this man to officially say, look, I want us to be official, I want us to commit, and he hasn't done that, I would be concerned. Because it really does not take a man that long to know that he wants you. It really does not take a man that long to know that he wants to commit to you. It really does not take a man that long to know that he wants to work at this and he thinks there is a chance at success and he wants it to be official. It does not take a man that long. Really, when a man really wants a woman, he knows that I can't really be snoozing or I might lose. Some other person can come and be more serious and take her away. So when a man really wants a woman, they go at it. They go at it. I'm not saying there are men who won't take their time. There are people who will take their time. But after two months and he has not communicated any intentions to you, I would be concerned. It could be that he is placeholding. 
and i have a video on place holding if you want to check that out for more details basically in a nutshell place holding is mm, i kind of like her but i'm not sure she's plan a so let me just keep her on pause you know put her on ice so just in case plan a doesn't work and you don't want to be anybody's option sis you do not want to be anybody's option so if you're getting to two months of a talking stage at that point it will start to wane the interest will start to wane the you will begin to feel the pull and the attraction begin to dry out because there really isn't anything for you to be talking about people are supposed to be moving to the next stage of intimacy i'm not saying professing love hasn't gotten to that you can if you if you're sure you feel it but i'm not saying there's no com there's no compulsory you know a uh, uh, rule that says you have to state i love you in a talking stage no but you have to be able to say, look, I think I want to commit. I think I want to build something with you. Can we try? And if after two months, you have no had the semblance of that conversation. Some people might have things going on in their lives. Listen, people have things going on. Like, you know, they might have some mental challenge. Some, 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 I don't, I don't mean madness. I just mean like a lot of mental stress coping with different situations in your day to day life. That is like, you know, I need to deal with all of this. by consider settling down or maybe financial constraints or there's a geographical issue, but all of those things fit into compatibility. And so you should have discussed it. And if there is no communication, then probably there isn't even compatibility because you need to know, are we compatible? Okay, you're in Canada, I'm in Nigeria. Is distance going to be a problem or can we walk through it? Um, I'm dealing with some financial constraint right now. I'm not sure I can couple that up with a relationship. Communication. If the person is communicating, then at least you know where they are here. They are in their headspace. But if they're not communicating and they just continue talking to you like, Oh, hey, what's up? How was your day? Oh, yeah, it's right. Like, Listen, that person might be placeholding. And it goes for both genders because women also placehold. So you as a man, if you're not getting the response you want, you're trying to commit and she keeps pulling back and drawing you in and pushing away, and you, she probably is placeholding and waiting for a better option or she just isn't feeling you that much. You need to be able to tell yourself the brutal truth so that you can cut yourself some slack and limit the, the level of disappointment and hurt that you might get from expecting so much from a person and you don't deliver as you want them to. Because really, when it comes to matters of the heart, we want it the way we want it. The heart wants what it wants. And when you don't get what you want, you're going to be hurt. You're human. So for you to limit getting hurt in the talking stage, because imagine being served breakfast in your talking stage. You're not even officially in a relationship and they're serving you breakfast. Come on now. Uh, at least let's leave the breakfast when we're in a relationship. Then we know we're liable to be served breakfast. But you can't be serving me breakfast in the talking stage. I'm a bounce. If after two months, you're not doing what you should be doing, and me, I'm certain that if you're ready, I'm ready. Me, I've seen that we're compatible. Me, I've seen that I like you enough to try. But if you're not committing to me, then probably you don't see me how I see you. And that's okay, because you can't really force anybody to like you like you like them. You can't force feelings and emotions on anybody. But you have to be able to choose yourself, because at some point, it gets pathetic. You have to be able to move on. And even if you don't want to move on and you want to say, well, maybe they're dealing with something, let me give them some time. I would suggest you do not put all of your eggs in one talking basket. I'm not saying frolic around or cheat or whatever, but this is a talking stage. So loyalty has not been established. Remember, the person has not committed to you. The person has not defined that relationship. So you really don't owe them exclusivity nor loyalty. So you're free to talk to other people because that person might be the one you are compatible with. That person whose DM you're airing because you're waiting for Mr. A who isn't doing the deed. That person might be the one that actually is your person. So I would say there is no need for you to be in one talking stage because if you're in one talking stage and after two months it crashes, you now start again. Hi, my name is Tori. Oh, yes, I am a medical student. Oh, no, I had the first degree first. No, 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 no. My favorite color is burgundy. You would get drained. It's tiring to go over that process over and over again. Like, come on. So, why not do it at the same time with several people? But if you're with a person who is communicating and talking about their intent and showing you signs that they want to commit, and within the, the, the range of two months, they say, look, listen, I think I'm convinced you. I like you. I spend a lot of time thinking about you. You're my kind of person. I think we should try to commit. Let's be exclusive. Let's see how this goes. That is the kind of person you then give your loyalty to. You then cut off the others because the others will not be distraction. Cut off the others and you focus on this one person. But when you're not getting that sort of communication, that sort of intent given, that sort of, you know, vibe, sis, bro, 
I would say choose yourself and take yourself out of that situation or at least minimize your expectations so you can minimize your potential hurt. Do I need to say that again? Minimize your expectations. If you don't want to take yourself completely out of the situation, minimize your expectations so that you can minimize your potential hurt. I said potential because it's not necessarily going to be hurt. That person might actually really like you and just not know how to communicate. In which case, if they snooze, they lose. If somebody better comes, you better move. There's no time. That's my advice. There's no time really but if you want to give the person more of a chance because like i said people are different for you four months might be okay to wait for you five months might be okay to wait that is absolutely your choice i am advising two months because it seems reasonable enough it seems a logical uh, amount of time for somebody to know if they want you in their life or not and i just feel like anything beyond that is a complete waste of time it's on seriousness and it's lack of interest and if there is interest and that means there is incompatibility because if there is interest and the person is not communicating that interest and there is incompatibility and that's just what i think about the talking stage so the key points to rehash the key points the talking stage is not the period where you declare love it's not the period where you decide or or realize that this person is going to be end game or going to be your mr right or going to be your husband that is not the stage for that the talking stage is simply where you determine compatibility interest and a willingness to try and see if you might succeed at a serious relationship or at a relationship on a deeper level the talking stage is not a period where you give exclusivity or loyalty to a person because they have not given you commitment and they have not defined that relationship so there is really no need for you to give loyalty you can if you choose I tend to do that when I start talking to a person and I really like them and I just feel like, oh, okay, this is my person. I tend to kind of ghost everybody else. I don't want to talk to anybody else because I'm just like focused. So there are people like that and there are people like me. And if you're like me, I would advise you to be very careful. Otherwise, it's very easy for somebody to place hold you and you're just giving loyalty to that person. Why they really aren't seeing you like that. So you have to be conscious about how much of yourself you give because if you do that consecutively the downside is you start to lose a bit of your self-esteem you start to wonder okay what's wrong with me i'm giving loyalty i'm doing everything i should do why didn't you like me so you need to be a bit selfish with yourself so as to minimize that potential hurt that i spoke about and that is basically my take on talking stages but of course i know i'm a very controversial person and also i know that i'm only speaking from my opinion and people's opinions differ so i'd like to hear what you think on this topic how long do you think a talking stage should last what do you think a talking stage should comprise of and basically do you agree or disagree with me drop it in the comment section and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to, you know, just share it. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I still don't know what it is that is keeping you from doing so. So just hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you can get notified whenever I post. I would confess I am an erratic poster, but I have a lot of things going on in my life that hinder me from getting in front of the camera, my setup being one of it. But we move. Okay, so till next time, I remain your coach, Tori. Mwah.